atopic dermatitis or eczema can be a chronic debilitating condition that affects and afflicts individuals across various ages and for a long span of time. If it's more severe, there are certain things that can be utilized to better manage severe atopic dermatitis, and this includes a very new emerging class of medications, FDA approved for the treatment of moderate to severe atopic dermatitis, and what we call Janus Kinase Inhibitors or JAK inhibitors for short. Eczema, of course, can run a whole gamut of severities from very mild and very infrequent relapses to patients who su suffer from severe eczema on a daily basis, affecting wide surface areas of the body. In mild eczema, symptoms are usually quite well controlled and typically only flares up during certain times or certain conditions. For example, when you're traveling to a very cold climate or when exposed to certain contact allergens. They can also involve limited areas of the body such as the face or even the hands and feet. In moderate eczema, this typically may involve more or greater areas of the body and have more frequent relapses than in mild eczema. These may be patients that have atopic dermatitis and have flexural involvement and sometimes also involvement of the face and other locations. In severe eczema, typically this is more debilitating, each can be a very constant symptom on a daily basis and they're frequently red, itchy and scaly across wide areas of the body, sometimes even up to 90% of the body surface area may be involved. In severe eczema, this can also be co-associated with sometimes frequent infections because of a broken skin barrier. They may be more susceptible to bacteria, staph aureus infection as well as uh, what we call eczema herpeticum. Eczema is known to be caused by a host of inflammatory cytokines and JAK inhibitors are a new category or small molecules that can target these inflammatory cytokines that stimulate the JAK pathway. JAK inhibitors are available in usually oral formulations and in some countries in topical formulations as well. What JAK inhibitors are really superior at is to achieve an itch remission within 72 hours as well as clear or almost clear skin within a month of initiation of use. JAK inhibitors are more targeted than other more broad-spectrum immunosuppressants such as prednisolone or oral steroids, cyclosporine or even azathioprine for the management of eczema and hence are reportedly safer with fewer side effects as it really is limited to the eczema pathway. Let's compare JAK inhibitors to steroid class of medications. As we all know, steroids are commonly utilized both by general practitioners and dermatologists for the management of eczema. They typically are utilized in a topical formulation, but sometimes we do give oral steroids for a certain number of weeks to really reduce a flare-up status. So if steroids are being utilized for a short span of time, you typically will not run into many severe complications. Short-term usage of steroids may give rise to insomnia, a little bit of water retention, weight gain, and more moderate use of steroids in the span of two to three weeks might give rise to maybe steroid acne or folliculitis if you're susceptible to it. Patients who may have underlying metabolic conditions such as diabetes and increased cholesterol may not benefit from longer term exposure to steroids as well as this may aggravate their pre-existing condition. Another concern about moderate to longer term use of steroids will be that of glaucoma formation and cataract formation. This can also increase the risk of skin thinning or atrophy as we call it, both in the form of overexposure to potent topical steroids as well as prolonged oral steroid therapy. As a result, steroids are suitable and safe for use in the shorter term. But if your eczema requires more moderate to longer term management, that's when we consider other class of immunomodulatory in, um, medications. Traditional older classes will be that of cyclosporine, azathioprine that has been well documented in the usage of eczema management. However, they are less targeted than this new class of molecules we call JAK inhibitors, which are really more specific at targeting the inflammatory cytokines that give rise to the eczema pathway. So by using a more narrow spectrum medication, we are able to avoid a whole host of other negative attributes that come with broader spectrum immunosuppressant therapy, such as that of prednisolone or even cyclosporine or azathioprine. And that is the main benefit and difference of JAK inhibitors versus the older category of medications. There are various JAK inhibitors available in Singapore's market and are approved for use by HSA. For example, baricitinib, abrocitinib, and upacitinib are also JAK inhibitors that can be utilized for the management of atopic dermatitis. 
In particular, baricitinib can be also approved for the use of alopecia areata and hence would be beneficial for patients suffering from that condition as well. JAK inhibitors, unlike other broader spectrum immunosuppressants, are actually very safe and have very limited side effects. Minor ones include that of headaches and nausea, which are not indications for stopping treatment. More major complications can include an increased risk of developing TB from latent tuberculosis as well as shingles. Now, this can be avoided usually by pre screening the patients for any latent TB or chronic Hep B infections to prevent a reactivation of a latent disease. Shingles as well can be limited or prevented by also introducing um, shingles vaccine before commencing JAK inhibitor therapy. More severe complication includes that of blood clotting, uh, clotting disorders, which may be increased risk compared to the general population. However, this is actually very rare um, and there are very few cases of such complications. Talk to your dermatologist today if you have poorly managed eczema and you feel that you might benefit from other medications such as the JAK inhibitor class we talked about earlier on. Other than JAK inhibitors, there are also other hosts of medications such as biologic injections like Lupilumab which can also be considered for the management of chronic atopic dermatitis. If you have any questions, don't forget to click our subscribe button and follow our YouTube channel for more dermatological content and stay up to date.